On this December 6, 2023 edition of What's Going On with Shipping, it's happened again in the Suez Canal. I'm your host, Sal Mercagliano. Welcome to today's episode. So this channel started with a grounding in the Suez Canal back in March of 2021, ever given. Well, happened again. We have a ship that's grounded right now in the Suez Canal, the ONE Orpheus. However, this time it happened in the dual lane of the canal. So the canal is not blocked. One lane is still open, but we do have this grounding taking place. I'm going to give you the latest on the ship, how it potentially happened, what's going on right now, and what does this mean for global shipping? Like, there's not enough going on with maritime choke points around the world. We've got the Panama Canal at low water levels. We've got shooting down at the Bab el Mandeb at the end of the Red Sea. We got drone attacks at the Straits of Hormuz. Man, just a lot of stuff going on with maritime choke points. These were images posted on Twitter. Here you see ONE Orpheus grounded at the time, uh, all the way forward here. It actually is is impaled bridge that crosses the canal. Uh, that is the end of the bridge where it is impaled on. This is an image coming from a tug. And you can see how the ship has basically run right into that bridge. Here's a better image. And you can see it obviously has caused extensive damage and cut through there because it has scraped down the entire uh, port side of the vessel. The starboard side would be in the same position. You can see the bow impaled. The question here is going to be damage to the vessel, uh, the bulbous bow underneath the vessel. What kind of damage is it leaking? Uh, is, is it potential of sinking, taking water? And the overall damage to the ship before they can remove it Here's the details from marine traffic on the vessel. The ship was obviously heading through the Suez, coming from Asia en route to Rotterdam. 15-year-old vessel, 9,040 TEU, that's 20-foot equivalent units. However, most containers are 40-foot, so probably about two-thirds that number of containers on board. Uh, the ship is flagged in Singapore. It's part of ONE. This is the Ocean Network Express. Express. This is a conglomeration of three Japanese shipbuilding firms. Uh, the ship is 336 meters in length, so well over a thousand feet long. Uh, the owner is Meiji Shipping Group. Uh, manager is ONE, and it was built at the Curie Shipyard in Japan. This is an image of the vessel in the canal. As I said before, it happened in the dual section of the canal. So you'll notice here on the west side, this is traditionally uh, the southbound lane of the canal, very much like a highway system in the United States and other countries, which they drive on the on the right side. And then the uh, what eastbound side is the northbound side. Uh, you'll see ships stacked up behind ONE Orpheus. This is the MSC uh, Abbey right here in the area. Other ships kind of lined up back here. And here is ONE Orpheus right here. She has come in. You'll notice the bridge right here. This is a swing bridge, which is usually across the canal. But when ships come through, they swing it open, lock it into place. And ONE Orpheus has basically driven right through that bridge you saw those images before you see several tugs are on position including the baraka one that's a large tug one of the things that the suez canal authority has done is assigned many more tugs to the convoys as they go up including stationing these large salvage tugs or towing tugs that are in position so that they can pull ships off the uh, uh, stuck ships, grounded ships, which happens more frequently than you think. About every year, at least, there is a grounding. However, Ever Given was significant because it took place in the one lane section of the canal. So here's the zoomed out image of the Suez Canal. You have Port Said all the way up here in the north. In the north, uh, on the Mediterranean, you have Suez here in the south, into the Gulf of Suez, and down to the Red Sea. And one of the things you'll see is traffic is moving. This is that southern section of the canal. Right around here is where Ever Given had run aground. This is the one lane section that comes out of the Great Bitter Lake. Here's the Great Bitter Lake where ships anchor, waiting for ships to pass. And then from the Great Bitter Lake northward, you have the two lanes of the canal. Now, notice ONE Orpheus stock right here in that northbound lane. However, traffic has shifted into the western lane. And so they're using that western lane to clear the traffic behind it. The concept of the dual lane here is to allow more ships to go through the Suez Canal. Traditionally, what you would have is ships coming in from the north, heading southward. They would anchor in the Great Bitter Lake, 
and then the northbound convoy would pass, head into the Suez Canal and go north, and then the ships anchored in the Great Bitter Lake would head south. Now with the two-lane canal, you can actually be bringing more ships down from the north as ships heading northward go into that new lane. What this is going to do until they clear ONE Orpheus is reduce the number of ships that can transit the canal. Prior to the dual lane of 2015, you could only move about 50 ships maximum through the Suez Canal. With the dual lane, you can go up to 90 ships. So I'm going to play you the replay here on marine traffic of what happened with the vessel. This is the southern anchorage off of Suez. These are the ships waiting to get into the canal. The timestamp on here is 6 December, 00, 00 hours uh, UTC time. That makes it 2 a.m on 6 December in Suez. Suez is two hours ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. This is at an accelerated rate here, obviously. Uh, you see the initial ships heading into the canal here. They're forming up, heading into the canal, heading off. They're kind of dropping off right here because the, the way marine traffic works is it has a window here, so you're not seeing the ships head in. But the, as they disappear off to the north there, they're heading into the canal. So that first wave of the of the northbound convoy is heading in, and now the second kind of tranche, which is in this lower anchorage here, is going to start heading off. You see the Michigan Highway heading off, Ever Arm heading off, all the vessels. Here's ONE Orpheus. I have her track on here, so you'll be able to see her go. She would have embarked a pilot at this point, and so she's going to start heading into the canal. Uh, once she's into the canal, she'll take on board a new pilot, and start heading northward in the canal. Again, this is the area where Ever Given got in trouble, this one lane section. But again, no difficulties here. Uh, they are heading up into the Great Bitter Lake at this time. Pretty uh, standard pa practice here. You see the rest of the ships kind of lining up in here. They're gonna come in and you see them kind of start anchoring at this point. Those are the ships that had come in earlier. They're gonna anchor. This part of the convoys actually go ahead and head right into the northbound lane. You'll see ships heading southbound in that uh, westward lane. And so this is the normal flow you would see with the ships heading in. So this normal two-way traffic is coming in. I'm gonna pause it here and zoom in a bit so that we can see exactly what happens. We're gonna slow it down a bit here for you too so you can see what happens. So again, we're following ONE Orpheus. Here she is doing about seven and a half, eight knots. Uh, that's pretty typical. About eight to nine knots is the is the the uh, speed you have heading through the canal. Go ahead and speed that up just a little bit. She's going to make this turn here. She comes around the bend. Here is the here's the section of the bridge right here. We see here's the vessel doing nine knots at this time going to swing in here. She goes a little wide there, kind of hard to see. We're going to come back in here. Let's reverse that for a second. And we're going to go ahead and slow this down even more. There may be an issue here with the ship. Now, again, AIS is not always perfect here for doing it. So you're making a turn here. And the question is, did the ship have too much speed on making this turn? Again, coming in here at a roughly around nine knots. And then you see the ship kind of overcompensating, coming in and making that move and then hitting into the area that is the bridge. Uh, there are two things that largely cause accidents on ships. One is mechanical. So something breaks. So was there a rudder damage? We, we know speed is up, so we don't have an issue with speed. So speed's not an issue. Doing nine knots, we know that propulsion is fine. Uh, was there a rudder issue? Was that? The second, and, and the one that's usually the one that happens, is human error. Did human error cause this to happen? Did we have just too much speed coming in here? Was the order not clear? One of the things to remember is that one of the things that caused ever given to ground, based on the report we've seen, is that the pilots were giving basically helm orders. They weren't giving course orders. And the question becomes, were they overcompensating? Uh, obviously, the ship has basically hit pretty hard here, and now the effort's going to be to try to remove the ship, to pull it off that railway bridge, and mo most importantly, not cause more damage. What they don't want to do is pull it out and the ship sink and block that lane. So what they want to do is, is execute a salvage of the vessel at this time. You see the tugs coming into position, a lot of aid coming almost immediately. They have this little cutoff lane so that they can cut, come in there 
So one of the things I do love about my marine traffic, and again, hats off to the crew at marine traffic, is you get live updates. O&E uh, Orpheus is off. They have actually extricated in the time it took me to do view that recap. They have pulled her off. Uh, the Bacara One has her now in the center of the channel. You'll see the tugs are in position right now. They will probably go northward with her because there are ships backed up behind her. They're probably going to wait until ships clear the channel uh, before they move, but they're probably going to start moving O&E Orpheus here uh, northward and try to get her up into Port Said and clear of the canal. So a quick move by the Suez Canal. The Suez Canal Authority has become much faster at removing uh, vessels from it. So this is a great effort by the Suez Canal Authority. We've seen this repeatedly since Ever Given, where ships have gotten stuck. They've been able to free them pretty quick. Uh, there are efforts to try to make the entire Suez Canal dual lane. That's really tough, especially in that southern section. But fortunately, this accident happened up here in the northern dual lane section. A lot of questions, again, are going to be what caused this accident. Was it too much speed going in? Was it pilot human error coming in? Just don't know at this time. But nine knots coming into a, tur a turn like that, again, very manageable for experienced helmsmen and pilots to handle that. But again, very easy too for a ship to get away from you. And before you know it, you find yourself impaled on a bridge. So really good news here that the ship is off and free. Uh, we expect to see the Suez Canal open then without any problems. Of course, this bridge is going to be severed now, connecting the um, uh, Sinai Peninsula to Egypt. Uh, that will be a big issue, but traffic is moving through the Suez Canal now. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, hey, take a moment. So Subscribe to their channel and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, and if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You can hit the super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon where you become a weekly, a monthly or yearly subscriber. Until our next accident in the Suez or something else happens, this is Sal signing off.